Hey friends, it's Charles here, and I want to talk about what I consider the hidden gem of modern pro wrestling. I am talking about Ring of Honor. Uh, there has been a lot of criticism thrown their way ever since um, Tony Khan from All Elite Wrestling purchased Ring of Honor. And some of it was fair in the beginning. Um, it was pretty much ran as a second tier promotion uh, taped, you know, just before or after AEW with meaningless matches and no consistent roster. And for a while, I quit watching because of that. You know, the championships and most of the major players in uh, Ring of Honor were more featured on AEW television as opposed to where the main Ring of Honor show aired which was the uh, Honor Club streaming service. Um, recently, you know, I've been in search of something different, something new. And so I figured I would give them another look on Honor Club and see if anything had changed. And to my surprise, a lot of things have changed for the better. And uh, a lot of the things they were doing right there are continuing to um I've seen, uh, I've watched three weeks of programming um, since I've been subscribed again. And it's all leading up to this Friday's Death Before Dishonor pay-per-view, which is actually included for the $10 monthly fee. So this is as good a time as any to talk about uh, Ring of Honor. What they've done right. Um, they have put, given a lot of opportunity to long-deserving people. Uh, be it Willard Yuta, who is, you know, a crazy talented wrestler, a absolute star on the independent wrestling scene. Um, they've given him multiple and extended runs with the Pure Championship, which is contested under more traditional rules, really allowing him to stand out as an elite athlete. Um, with Athena, she has been... Um, she has been the most dominant champion male or female since Samoa Joe. Um, and, you know, they finally gave Cesaro his world championship as well. And um, after Cesaro, it was Eddie Kingston. And now the world champion is... Why am I blanking? Oh, yeah, Mark Briscoe. How could I forget Mark Briscoe and his big emotional win, you know, carrying that torch for the Briscoe brothers after Jay's, you know, untimely passing. And so it's been a lot of good stuff happening with the championships and the champions. But with Athena and Om, yes, she had a tremendously long and dominant run with the title. She is also taken two talents under her wing, so to speak. When I quit watching, um, she was, one of the most compelling storylines was between her and Billy Starks. Billy Starks, literally a high school kid, you know, wrestling on the weekends. And, um, you know, a great athlete, but not a lot going on as far as personality. You know, just your, you know, average teenager. You know, um, but with her, her teaming with and feud with Athena, you know, it was, you know, it's brought out a lot of character in her. It gave her an edge as a good guy that, you know, she, that she's carried all over the Indies as well and more depth as a character on that end. But now, since they created a mid-car championship the Women's Television Championship. Uh, she won it due to uh, cheating. And it kind of, it, it really solidified her and Athena's bond, um, where I think a lot of people assumed that it was going to go to a breakup and a subsequent win of Billy Starks winning the, world, the Women's World Ring of Honor Championship. You know, it made them a unit, a tag team per se and kind of a mentor-mentee relationship that is just fun. And, you know, Athena being that dominant champion, 
you know, it's it's given a lot of credibility and prestige to whoever beats her for that championship. Um, they are going to instantly gain credibility. And so they're doing great things with the women's division. And this Friday, I believe Red Velvet is challenging Athena for her women's world championship. I honestly hope Athena wins. And Queen Aminata is challenging Billy Starks. Um, that can go either way. I really don't have a preference there. Um, but what they've also done as well is with that story is Lexi Nair, a backstage interviewer who was just kind of, you know, the um, random generic backstage interviewer has kind of joined up with this motley crew of Athena and Billy Starks and has become almost their unofficial manager and cheerleader um, outside of the ring. And so that's been a really fun dynamic to watch. Um, with Willem Yuta, he's been having crazy matches with, you know, tremendous wrestlers and, um, you know, guys like... Um, Man, I am blanking on a lot of names. I'll put this picture right here. And he goes by Tiger Style. Great, great young wrestler. Um, and a lot of other legends, you know, putting on um, great wrestling clinics. Um, you know, and you're getting to see, you know, a lot of guys featured that you wouldn't see usually on AEW. Guys like one of my favorite tag teams since they got together, the Infantry with uh, Carly Bravo and Sean Dean. Sean Dean is, uh, you know, a great high-flying wrestler, and Carly Bravo is an entertainer, um, like you would not believe, um, um, incredible rapper, personality for days, which seamlessly transfers to his in-ring style and swag. And we can't forget the third member of the infantry, Trish Adora who held the uh, Pan-African Championship, which was, you know, open to all genders. She held that for over a year. Um, you know, a great Pan-African champion. You know, they had that military background, all three of them. And so they got together, and they're the swag is on. And I think that, you know, you could put some momentum behind them to be, you know, great champions here soon. Um you know, for 10 bucks a month, you get four shows, and it's not forced upon you. They're not just taking matches to take matches. They, you know, give you quality if they have 30 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour of quality content. That's what you're going to get. And I would rather see that than trying to force, you know, anything and everything on the TV for the sake of filling time and pleasing commercials. And on top of that, I recently heard that they're going to start having their own tapings for Ring of Honor. We're going to see more focus put on Ring of Honor, not just um, a part of the AEW machine. And so I'm very excited for that. And I think those are all good reasons to check out Ring of Honor. Anyway, that's been my thoughts. I will see you guys next time. Like I said, Death Before Dishonor is this Friday. Uh, regular episodes air on Thursdays. Uh, check it out. If you got a spare 10 bucks and you love wrestling, I can't suggest Ring of Honor enough. Anyway, you guys be easy, and I'll catch you on the clip until then. Keep enjoying that wrestling and nerd culture. I will see you soon.